ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to Lishman Carbogen M6 limited Q1 FY23 conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note this conference is being recorded i now hand over the conference to mr harshil daral thank you and over to you sir thank you moderator a uh, very good evening to everybody uh, thank you for joining on this call for the first quarter of uh, financial year 2023 um i'm sure all of you would have had a chance to go through the investor presentation that uh, we had uploaded and the published results uh the june quarter was a uh, a quite progressive quarter for us as a company and there was a good indication that we are in the right direction as far as the business is concerned uh the quarter saw a very strong pipeline of molecules in phase 3 progressing quite well and uh, you know we are happy to state that we have uh, unstarted work of almost us dollars 96 million on the development side which is a significantly strong order book that we hold right now um and uh, it, you know we are getting closer towards operationalizing our expansion in switzerland for the adc molecule as well as the french plant uh, for which uh, pascal can give you greater insight later on the call um the quarter also saw the india business uh, getting uh, quite a bit back on track from a revenue perspective at uh, both the babla and the naroda sites we do expect the uh, margins for for the babla site uh, that is predominantly uh, focused on the grants business uh, to keep ramping up from here on and uh, this would be driven by by a significant amount of revenues that we are expecting this particular site to generate over the over the next few years uh the the focus generic as well as the cost business did quite well in the first quarter uh both from a revenue as well as margins perspective and uh, we do expect even this business uh to keep ramping up and uh, keep on contributing to to the profit the quarter uh, on the cost side was also impacted uh, this was largely on account of uh, the high energy costs that uh, we have been experiencing in europe uh, the higher cost of raw materials for for our dutch business and uh, the higher logistics costs that we are seeing across the businesses uh, largely attributable to the geopolitical situation while we do expect that uh, most of this cost would be passed on to the customers at uh, in, in the foreseeable future there is definitely a time lag due to the already accepted orders as well as the competition overall we are excited about the about the growth for the group as a whole and uh, we do envisage the india business to uh, progress significantly and play an important role in the in the overall growth for the group uh, on, on the financial number side uh the new revenue stream that we would be starting or would be uh, having uh, as as part of our um, group revenue from the next financial year that is the business from the new french facility as well as the significant opportunities that we are seeing from the swiss business on the nce side so all of this put together gives us a very good visibility for the future and uh, you know we we definitely thank you for your continuous support and we are sure that uh, you know we are doing our ultimate best to take the company to the next level of growth with that uh, i will hand over the call to pastel sami our ceo for the carbon enhancers group thank you very much ashish uh for this introduction and uh good evening uh, everybody uh you're absolutely right the, the first quarter of this year has been uh, uh 
uh, marked by uh, the geopolitical events uh, on the globe, uh, which have uh, uh, affected our uh, financial uh, results and uh, uh, cost of energy, cost of raw materials has been uh, uh, clearly affecting our our uh, results by the end of this quarter. Uh, we're working uh, with uh, the commercial department uh, across the world to, uh, to renegotiate pricing <coughs> wherever it is possible in the short term to uh, integrate those uh, rates. Uh, that means, uh, as you mentioned, that we are on a, on a, on a good way to circumvent uh, those issues. Uh, obviously, uh, those negotiations, as you can imagine, are not the easiest that uh, you, you, you can get because everybody is uh, uh, suffering to keep their, their margin on. However, I'm very optimistic that uh, uh, at carbon analysis uh, level, we can uh, improve uh, our FDA uh, significantly in the, in the coming months uh, regarding that. Uh, some few words about the, the French uh, new affiliates. We are entering in the, in the very last straight of the, of the, of the project. Uh, we have successfully have submitted the, the, the file to the, to the French uh, authorities uh, to get their uh, opening green light. Uh, the Office of Show Launcher will come uh, within the next six months. In the meantime, there will be some back and forth questions and, and answers from the authorities that we are extremely confident uh, from, uh, from today that uh, we will get that uh, uh, opening approval in, in due time. So that's, uh, that has been a tremendous work uh, that has been performed by the, the quality and the regulatory affairs group uh, in France. Uh, and uh, that's going to drive us into the, the opening uh, first uh, during the first quarter of, uh, of, two, of uh, 2023. Obviously, uh, some work needs to be uh, uh, done uh, till that point. We are from uh, from uh, qualification and validation, but we are still uh, working on the on the new lines, uh, which are uh, now right on site, and uh, uh, we are some confident that uh, we are going to perform over the next uh, uh, seven months uh, the, all the work necessary to, to start up the, the first uh, negative test uh, and then uh, launching our first uh, project in the new facility by uh, end of the, the, the quarter uh, one. Uh, 23 uh, uh, successfully. Security achievements, uh, budget for this uh, uh, big project has been respected. Uh, although we have fought against a lot of, uh, of price increases here and there, we successfully uh, uh, conclude some great negotiations from a purchasing point of view, and uh, we kept our cost under control over the, the construction of, of that new site which is going to give us a, a significant uh, competitive advantage in front of some competitors that are building the, the, the same kind of, of, of facility uh, in the meantime, but where we knew that uh, they haven't been successful to, uh, to, to buy uh, equipment at the level we, we have built. So uh, in that respect, uh, we have maintained our competitiveness and that's uh, great news uh, for the future. Last word regarding the market perspective. Uh, from crimes and uh, and uh, also uh, feed and finish uh, markets. Uh, this is uh, fairly positive. The mass members uh, coming out of uh, different studies uh, demonstrated that uh, although the geopolitical uh, situation is uh, kind of, uh, of uh, difficult, uh, there is still a, a high level of uh, money invested in the pharma industry uh, in the uh, US and Europe. So that giving us uh, uh, a good uh, and, and solid market to uh, to uh, to hunt in, and uh, we are fairly confident that we can maintain our high level of uh, project pipeline. As you mentioned, uh, now reach uh, 96 uh, millions, which is giving us uh, more than a year of uh, of work in front of us. So uh, that's a very very comfortable situation for a company that carbon
Now I'm done, and I think I should hand it over to uh, Sanjay. That's right. Yes, possible. Uh, Sanjay, are you online? I think uh, Sanjay's line just got disconnected. Uh, we're just getting back on the call. Uh, I think in the meantime, uh, what, what we'll do is we'll go over the, the, the financial results for the quarter, and uh, then I can hand over the call to uh, Sanjay Manchuta. Uh, so as far as the, the, the quarter was concerned, uh, the, the revenue from operations on a consolidated basis stood at about 541 crores. And uh, uh, the, the, the good number, or uh, as far as the gross contribution is concerned, you know, we were at about uh, 82%, uh, which, is, which is something that uh, you know, we definitely hope on, hope on maintaining uh, throughout the course of the year, uh, because typically about 20% is, uh, is the cost uh, that we aim for. Uh, the costs for this particular quarter included uh, higher raw material costs, especially for our Dutch business. And uh, when we get into the segment-wise revenue and EBITDA breakup, uh, we'll see that the Dutch business EBITDA was lower than what it has been traditionally, largely because of the higher input cost. The employee expenses for the quarter stood at about 256 crores. Uh, the employee expenses are more or less in line with uh, what we had in the in the last quarter of uh, financial year 22, and uh, you know we do expect the employee expenses to be more or less in this range for the for the remainder of the quarters of the current financial year. The other expenses to that 104 crores uh, for the quarter. Uh, these other expenses included um, uh, foreign exchange loss of about nine crores. Uh, because of which, uh, you know, the data was lower by that much amount than what we were actually expecting. Uh, and hence, the reported data stood at 88 crores. Uh, the other expenses also include um, the, the impact of the IFRIC interpretation that we had mentioned in the last quarter results, where there was a one-time impact of 18 crores. Uh, that impact in the current quarter is about two crores which has also been stated specifically in the, in the reported results. Uh, so on a normalized basis, the data would stand at about 90 crores. Um, the, the finance cost uh, for the quarter stood at 19 crores. Uh, this looks to be a bit higher than what we had in the, in the last quarter of financial year 22. And, uh, and, and the, uh, the, the, the important reason is the forex loss, which is also booked as part of the finance cost. Uh, this is to the extent of uh, three crores. As far as uh, the segment-wise uh, breakup is concerned, uh, Dishman India, uh, the, the, the APIs and the intermediate business did a revenue of 62 crores as uh, compared to 32 crores in the first quarter of last financial year. Uh, so obviously last year, first quarter, or the first two, three quarters, uh, the revenue wasn't great from the India business uh, because we were still uh, expecting the approvals from some of our customers so that we could restart the production of certain APIs. And uh, that has begun from the last quarter and also in the current quarter, we saw huge amount of shipments of the APIs and intermediates uh, happening from the Babla side. So that translated into a revenue of 62 crores, which is almost 92% growth as compared to Q1 of last year. Uh, the cost and generic business also showed a 7% a, a growth and the revenue stood at about 51 crores. Uh, but, the, but the good thing was that we were able to sell the quartz and the, and, and the focus generic at, at a good margin, and uh, that obviously had a positive impact on the overall EBITDA margin. The Carbogen and Cis Grants business uh, did a revenue of 363 crores, uh, which is uh, about 3% growth as compared to last year's same quarter. Uh, so it was, again, a, a good quarter in terms of revenue at Carlos and Amsis. Uh, however, most of this revenue is dominated by uh, the development revenue as compared to commercial. 
So there were uh, certain commercial product supplies which could not go out in the first quarter and uh, which which are going out in the in the current quarter of the financial year. So we would see a higher amount of commercial sales uh, from carbogenesis cram segment in the current quarter and, uh, and and in the remainder quarters as well. Uh, the carbogenesis DB business, which is our cholesterol and vitamin D analog business, did a revenue of 63 crores. So this is a drop of about 46% as compared to last year's same quarter. Uh, however, last year in the same quarter, we had a significant amount of supplies of uh, cholesterol that went out uh, to one specific customer. And uh, that was the reason the revenue was exceptionally high uh, and which comprised almost 38% uh, of the annual revenue in a single quarter for the BB business which is obviously not the case in the current quarter, but we do expect the revenue to ramp up as we move into the remainder of the year, both on the cholesterol as well as the vitamin D and an offside. As far as uh, margin analysis is concerned, uh, India did report um, a, a positive EBITDA on the, uh, on the APIs and the intermediate side. Uh, the cost and generates did, uh, did an EBITDA of about 10%. Uh, Carbos and Ansys grants, um, the, the EBITDA margin stood at 19.4%. Um, and uh, the cholesterol and vitamin D analogs business, the, the margin stood at 19.3%, which, uh, which is quite lower than what our norm has been uh, historically, which is somewhere around 30% margin mark. And the major reason for this drop in the margin is uh, largely on account of the increase in the prices of wool grease, which is our primary raw material for manufacturing cholesterol, as well as uh, the analogs. Uh, we do expect that uh, the prices should normalize um, in, in the course of the year, and we are trying to increase the selling prices of some of these products to the extent possible in order to get back to the margins that we were making earlier. Uh, secondly, the energy costs have, have also increased and uh, out of our European business, we have seen the largest impact in Netherlands. So, um, um, and, and just to give you an idea, the energy cost differential is almost three times to what it was in the, in the first quarter of last year. So uh, that did have an impact on the margin. We keep on trying and negotiating with the customers to pass on, uh, if not fully part of this cost, as part of increasing the selling price. But uh, there would definitely be a time lag, um, and uh, you know that could be a, 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 at least two quarters before we start seeing the, the full effect of the cost being passed on to the customer. Um, I think that's, uh, that's about it as far as the financial highlights were concerned. Uh, just one last point on the EDQM as far as the Babla site is concerned. Uh, so we do expect to be completely ready in, um, in October uh, this year for, uh, for informing the, the authority about, um, about performing the inspection. And, uh, you know, that there have been a lot of technical changes, a lot of improvements in various areas that have been carried out at the Babla site. So uh, we feel pretty confident, you know, as and when there is an inspection uh, to successfully pass it. Uh, you know, as we had mentioned in our previous calls, we have successfully passed many of the customer audits, and uh, which has allowed us to, to resume the production of, of almost all of the products for our customers on the cram side. So, uh, so that's uh, that's a bit update on the EDQM, and uh, I think with that, uh, I would hand over the call to Mr. Sanjay Majmudar, our independent director. Sanjay, over to you. Yes, good evening, uh, everyone, and thanks for joining this call. Um, I think since we are already a bit late, very quickly, an update as Harshil has explained on the numbers. In spite of the a little bit of headwinds in Europe uh, due to the pricing and the cost pressures, I think overall performance in Q1 has remained quite in line with what was expected. 
uh, with a marginal positive uh, consolidated uh, profit being reported as against the loss that was reported in the previous quarter. We believe going forward, quarter over quarter, both Bavla and Naroda, of course, Naroda has performed exceedingly well, and Bavla will also start catching up from second quarter onwards. We believe that at the end of the year, we should definitely see uh, 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 at least 10% uh, uh, top line growth this year and uh, a significantly positive. Uh, profit being reported for the year as a whole. That is how the internal working is indicating and we are quite um, reasonably certain about it. Uh, more importantly, if you talk of next year, with the co-investment project going on very satisfactorily and likely to be commissioned next year, and with the French facility at the Riom also getting commissioned next year, I think from next year onwards, we should see a very, and, and of course, Bavala and EDQM behind us. I think from next year onwards, we should be back to the, the, the old golden days of uh, consistent performance and good profitability. I think with this moderator, let's throw the house open for Q&A. Sure, sir. Thank you. Uh, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mr. Subrato Sarkar with Mount Infra Finance Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, Mr. Yeah. Sarkar. Yeah. Sir, just a clarification, like uh, even uh, when we were attending your uh, con call last year, you said that that year will be normal and then from this year onward everything will come back to normalcy and then uh, like uh, we will see the pre uh, uh, like uh, uh, previous performance now sir again in this con call you are stating this year will be normal and then from next year onward things will uh, like uh, become uh, whatever uh, like uh, prior to that uh, drop uh, uh, period, like you will revert back to that. So why this kind of uh, shifting of goalposts that is happening, sir? I can understand like there is a uh, uh, bad performance from cholesterol and vitamin D, but it was quite expected. Like you could have easily understood like because of normals in the situation, demand, uh, then abnormal demand last year would have normalized. So uh, uh, can you clarify? Because as a shareholder, what is happening, sir, if we time you are shifting your goal and uh, commenting like uh, and from next year onwards things will be great but nothing is happening basically for last two years so please uh, uh, please help us to understand the situation uh, in, a, in more detail so that we can put faith on the management otherwise it become very difficult to like you come into the con call make some comment and then uh, things uh, you shift your goal it become very difficult as a shareholder to like uh, rely on the management and like put faith on the management. Thank you, Mr. Sarkar, for your question. Um, so, uh, Mr. Sarkar, uh, what we had mentioned uh, last year was that as far as the India business is concerned, uh, we expect it to be close to 70%, uh, you know, 70% uh, normalcy should be achieved in the current financial year. And, uh, you know, that we are very much on track uh, for achieving, uh, that is number one. Uh, as far as the Dutch business is concerned, uh, you know, obviously there is a pressure as far as the cost is concerned, but we do expect, uh, you know, the, the, the margins to come up uh, at least to around 25 to 30 percent uh, as we get into the, the remaining three quarters of the year. 
the revenue as far as the Dutch business is concerned, you know, the, the, I mean, it, it, is, it is just that uh, the fourth quarter did not have significant amount of revenue, but, you know, that is the nature of our business. Uh, for us, it is very difficult to compare uh, this quarter versus last year, same quarter, because there would be certain quarters where the revenues would be significantly higher than what the previous quarters have done. The right way to look at our business is on a yearly basis, and on a yearly basis, even as uh, Sanjay Bay alluded, uh, we are quite confident of achieving at least a 10% uh, kind of growth as far as the revenue is concerned. Uh, the EBITDA should grow at a, at a much faster pace, and uh, that should result into a positive uh, uh, fact. So I'm debating uh, from what we had stated earlier. Uh, it, is, it is just that uh, from a quarterly perspective, you know, it, it's very difficult to give a guidance. It, we can give a guidance more so on a yearly basis, and that is something that we did last year, and that we are pretty much confident of achieving this year. No, sir, I understand that like uh, this much uh, uh, we are tracking your company for pretty long time. So we understand uh, I'm not at all talking about quarterly uh, uh, guidance and quarterly performance. I'm talking about full year performance. You can go back to your previous year con call and uh, prior to that Q4 of uh, uh, like FY20, uh, uh, FY21 and you can uh, you can see that whatever you have committed, sir, it has not been delivered. Like th those are all. Uh, documented document so we can have a discussion. This is one thing. And second thing, now, sir, on a more specific parameters, like uh, the uh, uh, the molecules like which we have got and we keep on presenting on our, uh, like, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 cramps molecule uh, 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 like which are in research phase. So uh, uh, just to understand because of the slowdown in the overall situation or whatever for other reason, is there any slowdown in the development of those molecules? Is there any delay that, that you are facing uh, while that molecule comes in, uh, into the market? I understand it's a, it's a, it's not your own decision, but uh, like uh, it's a partner's uh, decision, and uh, uh, it depends upon certain like uh, 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 certain uh, uh, approvals and uh, certain things. I understand, but if there is some change in the overall situation in terms of uh, molecules, then it will be great if you can uh, like uh, clarify us on those things. So, um, yeah, so that's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fossil, fossil, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just to come back on your on your first questions, uh, obviously uh, from from the, the promises that have been done last year, uh, the war in Ukraine and the, the cost of of, uh, of of the main raw material we are using for the the cholesterol and vitamin D products has tremendously affected the the, the, the profitability uh, of those. Uh, of those products uh, over the last quarter, and this is one of the major impacts, as well as, uh, as uh, uh, Ashil uh, mentioned, uh, there is a, a kind of a, of a product mix effect on, on, on last quarter. I fully understand the disappointment, and uh, we are the first to be disappointed in that, in that matter. We, uh, we really are really keen to, to get back on, on, on track earlier, but uh, of course, the, the uh, the significant events in uh, in uh, between Russia and Ukraine has affected uh, a lot of uh, of, uh, of the raw materials, for instance, and the cost of energy has affected our our revenues. Coming back on your second questions uh, with the crimes business, uh, is there any impact? So far, we haven't been uh, advised by our customer that there are delays. Those uh, those. Uh, Late phase, phase three uh, programs are significant uh, uh, in, in our portfolio, and uh, some of the applications are very broad and uh, are treating long-term uh, disease, which means that the results coming out of the clinical trials are quite long to get. So that's why it takes a lot of time to get through uh, all those steps uh, to develop a, a drug you need. Eight to ten years to finalize the 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 the, the, uh, the phoenix and the late the later phase the phase three can take uh, three to, to five years depending on the 
the kind of, of uh, disease you are treating to gather all the data and justify the, the market application. But so far, no, we, we, we don't have uh, any, any uh, delay uh, reported by uh, our partners. Uh, we have to, to also clarify that that step, that R&D steps, we get money for that. We make money out of that. Uh, and, and we do a lot of money out of that. So uh, the fact that the product is staying in phase three doesn't mean that we are not generating revenues. Quite the contrary. Uh, we actually do sometimes more money into the, 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 the development phase because there is a lot to do than in a commercial phase. Because in the commercial phase, then you start to have a big pressure on pricing. Uh, people want to, to fight and prepare uh, from the very beginning the, 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 the time when the, 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 the product can come to generics. So we do more more margins on the on the on the R and D phase. So having those products into that phase is not that bad for our company. Quite good. So uh, yes, the commercial side gets more predictable uh, uh, revenues, but you have a lot of of, of, of price pressure, and uh, it's harder to uh, to uh, to defend high margin. It's quite a contrary in the R and D side. We have a bit less of a, of a vision uh, because, yes, it's clinic, but you have a much better margin and you treat a lot of more to do in R&D, in analytics, and so forth. So uh, uh, it's good to get those products through and then the market because it's giving you the baseline, for sure. But adding those staying into the R&D, we still generate revenue out of that. It's two-thirds of the, the carbon dynamics uh, uh, revenues. This is those are in this stuff where uh, we, we do of uh, of ours and we spend a lot of time for our customer that we are investing. I hope you can answer your question. No. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sir, you are not audible. Can you repeat? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. So my last question is like we have 17 phase three molecules. So can can we give some kind of estimate, like let's say for uh, if we assume another three years time period, let's say uh, till FY 23, 25 end, can you give us some estimate, like uh, out of the 17 molecule, although it's a it's a partner decision, but at least if you as a shareholder, if you can can give us some guidance, like out of the 17 phase three molecule. Uh, what is the number of molecule ball per that you expect to get commercialized? So once again, and uh, yeah, that's what you said. It's not totally, totally in, our, in our, it's not totally in our in our, in our uh, hands because it depends on the uh, customer how successful they are to, uh, to to collect all the clinical data, how they can demonstrate and and build the case to uh, to get their and the age, uh, we can look and, and look at our uh, historical data. And yes, historically, two to three molecules uh, are going to, to, to the market uh, uh, from the 15 to 20 molecules we have in, in our pipeline. That's what we can do as a, as a, as a guess. But once again, it's just a guess because we highly depend on uh, how successful is the, the molecule in this phase three, how they can demonstrate the, the, the big differentiators uh, from the, 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 the competitor, or if it's a breakthrough, how quick they can collect all the data. Uh, we are uh, all expecting, uh, we have three projects that are very, very likely to come to, to, to the market in the in next uh, 12 to 15 months. That's what our uh, partners are. Often, but once again, we can do bit on uh, how successful is uh, is it is to collect their data, and uh, some of those molecules are uh, quite uh, uh, difficult because they, they they are embracing some very complex mecha mechanisms in the body. So to demonstrate everything, it takes time. Yeah, that's probably three molecules out of the. The 18 that could come to the market if everything goes as planned by our customers. 
ओके सर जस्ट एटलीस्ट इफ यू सी फ्रॉम अ हिस्टोरिकल पर्सपेक्टिव लेट्स एज्यूम लास्ट थ्री इयर्स हाउ मेनी मॉलिक्यूल्स फ्रॉम फेज थ्री हैज मूव टू कमर्शियलाइजेशन फेज इन लास्ट थ्री इयर्स लेट्स एज्यूम सर लाइन ऑफ मिस्टर निखिल Chandak with JM Family Office. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, my my uh, question was from a capital allocation policy. Uh, you know, where do you see more capex happening going forward? Last two three years, we've done a significant capex in the European region. Now, if you compare Europe and India, clearly the economics of manufacturing will never match up. Your asset turns in Europe. or your margins in europe just given the cost base will always be i presume higher than what it will be you know versus india so so do you continue you, yourself seeing investing more in the european region because that will be less roe generative as compared to what it can be in india and longer term yeah, is there a potential to shift the manufacturing from europe to india sure uh, thank you nishal for your question so as far as the capital allocation is concerned uh, you know right now as you as you know we are investing in france uh, on the, for the for the parental projects you know which would be uh, our core into formulations supporting our customers and uh, the second thing that we keep on investing uh, are all the development assets and the small scale manufacturing in switzerland so that is something that uh, you know we will have to keep on doing in order to make sure that we keep on getting more and more molecules for development which will eventually turn into commercial molecules in the future as far as the larger scale but, but, manufacturing but, 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 why can't those molecules be uh, you know contracted from the indian entity whatever new development so as far, is happening so as far as the early phase development work is concerned uh, you know what we have seen is that uh, most of our customers they are extremely comfortable sharing the the ips and getting the work done in the initial phases uh, from a site in the western world and that is the reason you know we have uh, close to about 450 odd molecules across different phases of right. development so that we are doing companies are doing it right i mean it's it's uh, you know this is this is not a unique business only to dishman there are so many other indian companies which do con- the contracting from the indian entity and customers are confident uh, of sharing information and data so most of the indian companies uh, you know so so some of the indian companies that we have seen they start with the discovery process which uh, we are not into right now um, and uh, you know there are other companies which have only a small portion of their of their total portfolio which is dedicated to mc so as far as our competition is concerned you know our competition comes from other players in europe and uh, and also from us we don't face uh, any competition from any of the indian players uh, as far as the nc business that comes to us at cargo genesis is concerned and pascal correct me if i'm wrong and if you want to add something oh yeah absolutely yeah, right uh, there is a strong appetite for some of our uh, Uh, we still uh, customers to to stay and and start the development of product uh, in uh, in uh, in Europe, especially on uh, on those complex molecules. Uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, at Cabbage and Mcs uh, in Europe, we have some assets that we don't have in uh, in uh, in India in terms of uh, of, uh, of size. So. Uh, we are more uh, uh, well equipped to address the this uh, uh, clinical phase in uh, in uh, in Europe with the smaller vessels than that we have in in our plants uh, on top of that uh, we were speaking about uh, uh, return on investment uh, the fact that we have invested in, in France it was also linked to the fact that we we got some grants from uh, from the French authorities uh which uh, have, have been uh, enabling us to reach some nice uh, 
uh, recommendation as well. Uh, we also uh, got from the local community a uh, very fair price for, for the land. So, uh, uh, and uh, as I said, we, uh, we, uh, we have conveyed uh, very strong uh, uh, negotiations to keep the, 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 the cost of, uh, of this investment at a, at a very uh, uh, low level, which is going to guarantee a high competitiveness of, of that asset and then a, a, a short uh, return on investment. So uh, uh, the market is completely global those days in, uh, in, uh, in the farm industry. I understand your, 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 uh, your, uh, your feeling by if we can move uh, uh, those assets in, in India, we might find a better uh, 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 profitability and uh, uh, shorter return on investment. Yes, if we have had the same assets, but we don't have exactly the same assets. So we have to find the right product, the right volumes to play and trigger the, the, those leverage. Where they are located right now is where we can get the best out of it. Uh, when they got to commercial, if they reach the, 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 the high level of, of volume, the, 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 the expected with some of the product, of course, we are discussing with the customers and, and the idea is to transfer this business uh, in, in India and fulfill the, 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 the India facility as well. Uh, so there's a nice business model here. First, we, we go and, and develop those, those products in, uh, in Europe with the high confidence of, the, of the, the, the customer. And then later on, once it's commercial, when we, we, we face some, uh, some uh, tier competition in terms of pricing, then we can transfer that to, uh, to, uh, to India and, uh, and still get nice profitability out of uh, the India asset. So, Mikhil, as far as the large scale manufacturing is concerned, we don't expect uh, you know that to happen uh, out of the Swiss or any of our European businesses. You know, we would try and utilize uh, China as well as the India side for the larger scale manufacturing, and that's that's how you know we are looking at the synergies to play out between uh, our Swiss entity and the India China business. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Praveen Srinivas with Samson Asset Management. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, I think I sort of missed it at the start of the call. Could you just tell me uh, what happened in the Netherlands business due to which sort of our margins fell? Because if you look quarter on quarter, the revenues are roughly in line. Right, but the margins potentially decreased by 10%. So what drove that decrease and how do you expect to uh, get the margin back to those levels again? So, uh, so, so thank you for your question, uh, Mr. Srinivas. So as far as the Dutch business is concerned, uh, you know, they, we have two major, uh, so to say, product segments in that particular business, uh, the cholesterol and the vitamin D analogs. Uh, the basic raw material for these products is uh, is the bull cream uh, that we source from a, from a supplier. And we are one of the largest uh, procurers of that material from this supplier. Uh, unfortunately, you know one, one of the other companies had had sourced uh, too much of wool cream uh, from this particular supplier because of which the prices had increased significantly. And in order to manufacture these analogs uh, and the cholesterol, you know, there are also other sources which could be utilized. So, for example, one of our competitors in, in China uses uh, another source which is not the good green. So one in uh, so one obviously because of the increase in prices of the wool green, the input cost increased, and that had a negative impact on the cost uh, for the Dutch business. As far as the revenue is concerned, we do expect the revenue to pick up in the remainder quarters because uh, we do see that the demand for calcified oil for the global market remains strong, which is one of the uh, vitamin D analogs that we manufacture. So, uh, so that was definitely one of the impacts. Second was uh, the energy cost in Netherlands. So we did see the, uh, the, the power and fuel cost in Netherlands go up significantly as compared to uh, last year. And that was almost three, three and a half times of what, uh, what the cost were in the same quarter last year. Uh, and this is largely on account of, uh, of the Russia-Ukraine war, 
uh, where, uh, you know, as you would have heard in the news, uh, the, the, the gas prices in Europe have, have gone up significantly. So that was the second negative impact as far as the margins were concerned. And, um, you know, the third was uh, obviously the logistics cost, you know, that we have seen across all of the businesses, and that would be true for almost all industries, uh, again, because of the geopolitical factors. So because of these three things, uh, you know, we did see the margins uh, dropping in in Netherlands. Uh, having said that, the sales team is working extremely hard in trying to up the sales prices for both the product segments to the extent possible. Um, and, uh, you know, in that way, we try to pass on the cost, as well as we do expect uh, that, uh, especially the raw material costs, should kind of uh, pull off in the in the remainder part of the year. So uh, so that that was the major reason. Arthur, do you want to add something? Well, I think you were summarizing the, the situation regarding the margin in the Netherlands. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Srinivas, did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a couple of follow-up questions in that. So one is, yes. so do you, do you expect that uh, moving forward that customer who was, so the other competitor who was uh, making large orders for the raw material, he's going to pull off? Like, is there any visibility around that? Like, has the uh, raw material cost dropped into the I mean, Q2 has started, right? It's, it's been more than one and a half months. So has has that seen a downward trend? Um, how are you sort of thinking, looking at that and thinking about it? And secondly, why is the higher logistics cost affecting you in this quarter, right? Like, it should have ideally affected in Q4 FY22, but uh, then mm -hmm. it didn't seem to be as much of an issue as it has been currently, right? So what has changed? Like, why is this suddenly a bigger factor than the previous quarter. Sure. So, yeah, so under answer your first question, yes, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, the prices come off a bit as far as uh, the wool grease prices are concerned. And, uh, you know, there is our expectation that it should kind of normalize as we move uh, further into the year. Uh, you know, we might not see uh, the 30% maybe in this quarter, but maybe in the in the later quarters. Uh, so that is that is our expectation as far as the Dutch business is concerned. The logistics cost uh, was was higher was high in the last quarter. That is the fourth quarter of FY22, as well as in the current quarter. So that was uh, this, I mean that did contribute to the to the increased cost in both the quarters. Uh, so if you're comparing just these two quarters, then yeah, then the logistics costs were more or less uh, similar. Uh, then, you know, the, the, the major two reasons, for, if you're just seeing the differential, that's the wool grease prices and, uh, and, the, and the power and fuel costs. Mr. Srinivas? Hello. Oh, sorry. So, why was the FX loss impact a one-time expense? Like, why is it not something you expect to, you know, have in the future? Do you like FX exposure? How does it work? Yeah. Yeah. So we had so this FX loss that we had incurred in this particular quarter. Uh, you know, that was largely on account of a large uh, repayment of a loan. Uh, which we had to make in the June quarter, uh, so it was like a uh, it, it was like a realized loss on that particular repayment that we had to book. Uh, we have hedged uh, close to about uh, I would say 60 70 percent of our exposures uh, for the remainder part of the year, and we do not have any major repayments uh, that are coming up in the in the next nine months. And uh, that is the reason, you know, we believe that uh, these nine crores of loss in a single quarter is, uh, is, is so to say, more of an exception, and uh, that, that is in line with uh, the, the U.S. dollar INR movement that we saw. Uh, and then there was a bullet repayment of that particular loan, which uh, which is not going to happen in the in the remainder part of the year. So, uh, you know, with the hedges that we have in place. 
and with no major repayments uh, coming up in the remainder part of the year, you know, we don't think so that should be a quarter with such a large amount of forex loss. Okay. And finally, so what is your guidance you're sitting here uh, about FY23 in terms of revenues, revenue growth as well as uh, margin? So we do expect uh, the revenues to grow by at least 10%. Uh, on the on the higher side, it could be somewhere around uh, 12 to 14%. But that's that's kind of the broad range that we are looking at uh, as far as the revenues are concerned. Uh, you know, which which uh, could be much higher in the next financial year. You know, once we have uh, started the supplies of the of the ABC molecule as well as um, I mean, the linker and the payload for the EDC molecule, as well as uh, uh, the French operations uh, begin to add to the revenues affordability. So, uh, so that is what our expectation is on the revenue side. On the margin side, uh, we believe that uh, it should be uh, in the range of around 20% uh, as far as the EBITDA is concerned. For the full year? Yes, for the full year. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Shinra. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Hari Bilawat with Techfin Consultants. Please go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes. 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 This is regarding new projects. It was to, it is told that some 96 million has been spent on the new project so far. Uh, what are the sources of uh, funds for this debt, equity, and internal accruals? Uh, how is the distribution in this? Uh, Mr. Bilawas, uh, the 96 million dollars that you see, uh, I think there is a lot of discussion uh, on your line, Mr. Uh, Bilawas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, please tell me. Yeah, sure. So the 90s, the, the, the 96 million dollars we see in the presentation, you know, that's the that's the product pipeline that we have right now. Uh, so that is the develop that is the amount of development orders, so the value of the development orders that are yet to start. So this basically gives us a good amount of visibility for the next uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, and which clearly shows that the development pipeline is quite strong. So it is not funding of any uh, development expenses. No, I agree with you. Uh, that is different part of development. But for the new projects, you are raising some 100 CHF, somewhere it is mentioned, or about 1,000 crores uh, of funds. So uh, uh, what is the distribution of these funds for new projects? I am talking about that. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry to uh, understand the question. So, um, uh, what we have, uh, Mr. Bilal, uh, uh, maybe you can put out what you use. There's a lot of Yeah, uh, I'm not able. Yeah, yeah, you, you can tell me. Okay. So, uh, the hundred million of funding, you know, that we uh, that we have raised and which is not utilized completely. Uh, so that is basically to fund the expansion for the Greenfield project in France, number one. So about 50% gets incurred on that particular project. Uh, the other part, uh, the, the, the other utilization, uh, the other utilization of the remainder 50 million, one is for our Swiss business, where we are doing certain amount of capex uh, for increasing our development capacity as well as uh, small-scale manufacturing. And they are incurring certain effects on the top side, especially on um, on things like uh, like SAP. So we are getting the SAP implemented across the carbon analysis group. Uh, we just did implement the in now. Uh, we are also putting in um, new lab software, uh, new quality software. So these are the software aspects in which uh, the remainder part of that would be. Okay, so th these are all the equity and debt. What is the distribution in that? I, I want to know those figures. 
So essentially, uh, you know, the bank has given us a line uh, for the entire capex, uh, but then obviously, you know, it's up to us how much of uh, the debt do we utilize and how much of it is how much of it gets funded through internal approvals. So right now, since most of the capex is uh, is sort of say front ended, and we want to get done with this project as quickly as possible, you know, we might see uh, the debt being taken right now. Later on, get paid off uh, as uh, through the cash flows that we generate from the business. Okay, thank you. That means the entire funds are tied up uh, for these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank, you. thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, uh, please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. As there are no further questions, I would like to hand over the conference to Mr. Harshil Dalal for closing comments. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, moderator. Uh, thank you, everybody, for getting on to this call and uh, being patient listeners and asking some quality questions. Uh, we, we would like to re-emphasize that uh, you know, all of us are working extremely hard in order to make sure that uh, you know, we are able to deliver the performance that all of you are looking forward to as far as the financial numbers are concerned. Uh, you know, we have a very strong outlook as far as the molecules are concerned. We are developing and manufacturing uh, certain molecules which are extremely niche in nature and uh, which would definitely help in improving uh, patients' lives. And that is, that is going to be our sole focus area as we move into the future. And, uh, you know, we thank you very much for your strong support, and we look forward to having you again on the call in the next quarter. Thank you very much, and uh, all the very best. Yeah, have a good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. On behalf of Dishman Carbogen Amsis Limited, and that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.